Transformers Revenge of the Fallen is the second instalment in the Bayformers franchise, focusing on the Decepticons reviving Megatron and attempting to bring forth the schemes of the Fallen, one of the original primes that turned evil and wishes to activate a energy generator on Earth, absorbing the power of the sun and wiping out the Earth in the process. Now, like many Michael Bay films, this movie has a wide range of characters and events and ideas that range from awesome to kinda meh to fucking terrible. A giant robot monster made up of other smaller robots combining together? That's pretty awesome. That monster then not doing much except doing some digging and swinging its balls around? What the fuck were they thinking? <laughs> a story about a guy that just wants to live an ordinary life, but keeps getting dragged into larger than life events despite his wishes. That's a pretty good idea. Giving said individual an annoying college sidekick that only does one noticeable action to keep the plot moving and then just spends most of the runtime being annoying? Get in the bin. Adding more additions to the Autobots and the Decepticons, giving us a wider range of characters and designs and personalities. Seems pretty cool, right? Having most of these characters relegated to the background and getting most of their screen time taken up by two of the most annoying Cybertronians I can think of? It's good, get your ugly we twin, you stupid genius. Just what a waste. This film had a lot of potential that either just wasn't capitalised on or they just ruined by other worse ideas. And I understand that this was made during the writer's strike, but I don't think this film had any reason to be this bad. Especially as it was so negatively received that even Michael Bay came out and said it was crap. But at the end of the day, I feel that, like the rest of the trilogy that Michael Bay made before he humbly decided to leave the franchise and not bog it down in a bunch of depressing, cynical, mythological Mark Wahlberg bullshit, Revenge of the Fallen is still an entertaining watch. And even the worst aspects of the film are at least still laugh worthy. And so, like many ideas in this movie, there's a script writing process that this film simultaneously does really well, and also at the same time does completely fucking abysmally, and that is to do with how to kill off a main character in your movie. Now, when it comes to most of these Cybertronian characters featured in these films, I feel like most of the time they're barely even characters to begin with. As I say, most of the time they're in the background just filling up the screen while the humans take centre stage. But, at least most of the time the ones that are given names at least display some noticeable feats or cool scenes before they die. There's one main character in the original trilogy that doesn't really stand out to me at all, either in terms of character or cool things they do, and that's the Fallen. Which is also hilarious because despite being the main villain of the film, the movie itself showed us that they're perfectly capable of killing off a main character in a great and dignified fashion. They just couldn't be bothered to do so for arguably the main Cybertronian character of the film. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two separate scenes in the movie the forest fight scene and the final fight scene, and explaining how one of them is an absolutely fantastic way to kill a character while the other just completely fails in every way possible. Now, the main plot of the film kicks off when a piece of the Allspark transfers its knowledge into Sam, knowledge that could lead to an ancient Cybertronian energy collector that the Decepticons want to use to harvest the Earth's sun for fuel for their army. The Fallen instructs the newly resurrected Megatron to find Sam and extract this knowledge from him, leading to Optimus rescuing him and engaging the Decepticons in battle. This battle is going to be the death scene of Optimus, and there's a lot of things about this fight that I enjoy. However, that will have to wait as I'm primarily primarily focusing on how the script treats Optimus. So first, here we get to see Optimus be a complete badass with no restraint. In the first film, I know many people had complaints about Optimus being a bit of a pushover, but I can kind of understand why he was losing in that battle. There, he was in a densely populated city with lots of civilians nearby, and in trying not to rush into combat and fire stray shots, he ended up having to take some heavy hits to keep the casualty rates down. Here, however, he isn't burdened by that, and we get to see Optimus perform really well combat-wise, giving us a delicious 3-on-1 battle that goes on for a pretty decent stretch of time. Secondly, while Sam is obviously an important character in this scene, the movie doesn't detract from Optimus too much. In a lot of the fights throughout this franchise, the scene tends to cut away from the fighting to focus on the humans, usually focusing on them trying to run away or talk to each other. But here, Optimus is given the main focus of the scene, and while we do get some small shots from Sam, it isn't much. And in fact, the scene goes out of its way to try and show Optimus and Sam on screen at the same time, ensuring that Optimus gets plenty of screen time building up to his death. Thirdly, this scene shows us exactly who Optimus is, both as a seasoned soldier and as an individual. I've already mentioned that he really gets to give it his all before his death, but another aspect of it is that it informs us of his character. Throughout these films, Optimus goes on about how freedom is everyone's right and that people deserve to choose their fates for themselves. 
but this would have been the best example of him defending those beliefs, at least in my eyes. All Optimus really knows in this situation is that Megatron wants Sam. He doesn't really know about the All Sparks knowledge in Sam's mind, or the plot that the Fallen is cooking up. All he knows is that Sam is in danger, and because this one human is in danger, Prime is willing to fight tooth and nail to save his life, regardless of personal cost. Even towards the end of the fight, when Megatron finally gives him some small hint as to what he's trying to do. There is another source of energon hidden on this planet. The boy can lead us to it. And is informing Optimus that they have a way to supply both the Autobot and Decepticon with energon. It's the future of our race, not worth a single human life. Optimus still refuses, not willing to bargain if it would cost even a single life to obtain this goal. You'll never stop it, one. Overall, this is an excellent way to kill off a main character, giving Optimus a dignified end where he stands by his beliefs even at the cost of his own life, which is more than what can be said about the Fallen. Now, his character is weak throughout this entire film. I mean, it's called Revenge of the Fallen, but he's not really getting revenge on anyone that actually wronged him. The other Primes were all dead, and the humans didn't even really do anything to him at all to start with. Never mind have any clues about what his plans are, or how to stop him, so he's not really getting revenge on anyone. But at least throughout the movie, he shows himself being much more powerful than the average Cybertronian. He has advanced knowledge on ancient Cybertronian technology. He can use telekinesis, and even teleport. He even mentions that Optimus is the only one who can defeat him, implying that Optimus has some sort of ability that would give him the edge over him, something that no other Cybertronian has against him. So how does the Fallen die? He gets thrown around like the prison bitch and then gets punched to death. That's it. That's the fight the final bad guy puts up. This being that Megatron serves, that was so powerful that the other Primes had to run from him, is such a loser that even with help he goes down like an absolute chump. Let's start at the beginning of this scene. Despite having all of these powers, it seems that the Fallen, despite his advanced knowledge and technology, possesses no means to attack from a distance, something most of the other Cybertronians seem to have. He also doesn't use his telekinesis to throw objects, he just kinda lifts them. And then when Optimus comes along, Megatron is just chilling, not doing anything, and Starscream just disappears from this portion of the movie. So when Optimus is barreling towards them as a very obvious target that they could shoot down, the Fallen can't do anything, Megatron doesn't do anything, and Starscream just just isn't there, and as such Optimus immediately dismantles their plan in a single shot and then body slams the Fallen off a pyramid. As they fall into the ancient ruins, Optimus shoots him against the wall and starts manhandling him, but then the Fallen manages to get a hit in. What attack does he use? Is it a telekinetic blast? Does his staff have some sort of weapon in it? Does he teleport behind Prime and stab him? No, he just uppercuts him. That's it. One of the two successful attacks he lands in this fight, and one of them is just an uppercut. As the fight continues, Megatron sneaks up behind Optimus, stabs him in the back, and makes Optimus use his boosters, body slamming the Fallen into the wall and then leaving him ruined on the floor. In this next scene, where it's just Megatron fighting, Megatron puts up a better fight than the Fallen does. The final boss of the movie, who is so strong that the big bad of the previous movie serves him, is now being outperformed by said previous big bad in his own big bad boss fight. You couldn't make him more pathetic if you tried. So after disposing of Megatron, the fight is now a one-on-one -on -one between Optimus and the Fallen. In this one-on-one, -on -one, as Optimus advances towards him, the Fallen's grand plan is to throw stones at him. I'm serious, look. His grand plan is to throw rocks at a two-ton pile of absolute beefcake and hope for the best. Naturally, this doesn't work, and Optimus takes off half of his right hand, half of his fingers on his other hand, and then cuts his chin off. Now here is where he gets his second successful attack. As Optimus is impaled in the stone, the Fallen wriggles free and smashes into the back of Prime's elbow. He then climbs on his back, rips off one of his thrusters, and smacks him in the face with it. And don't get me wrong, it's a solid move, but this is the only major attack he does on Prime throughout this entire fight, and this is his only fight. After hitting him with the thruster, the Fallen spins back around to attack with his staff, only for Optimus to immediately rip it from his hands and impale him with it, ripping off his face and causing the Fallen to become a staggering, struggling mess desperately trying to run away before Optimus rips out his heart and smashes it in front of him, leaving him as a pathetic pile of junk on the floor. The Fallen is the main driving force behind the plot of this film, who is depicted and talked about as a ruthless, cunning, mythological figure who is essentially a demigod that was so powerful that his brothers could not defeat him. And as Megatron's master, he essentially kickstarted the Cybertronian Civil War, being the mastermind behind all of the death and destruction we see causing these films. And after not seeing him do much throughout the movie, we finally 
get to see him in action, and he fails to use his powers to even put up a fight to the point where somehow Megatron is the more intimidating figure. It's just fucking terrible. Overall, Revenge of the Fallen demonstrates some of the best and worst writing that the series has to offer, showing us a death that is epic, engaging, and used to highlight the principles of the character, and offering a death that is hilariously bad and completely anticlimactic. And I genuinely find it so bizarre that both of these scenes come from the exact same movie. Thanks for watching lads and lasses, if you enjoyed this video please consider liking, subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. Sharing always helps and if you're feeling really generous please consider my Patreon or YouTube membership. I also have a Twitter and occasionally I do live streams. But most of all I just hope you had a great day and hopefully I will see you in the next video.